Theory and Mola. What's the situation? I think I got to take Grievous out. Kind of oh, ruins yeah. the flow. Yeah. What do you think? Damn. Need them in prequel memes, you know? But mm, maybe. if it's not working, then it's not working. We'll see. Maybe What's up, get, guys? Like, Welcome get a back. Get Jar Jar Binks in there. But yeah, uh, that'd be good. <laughs> Gotta be something. <laughs> Get him flying in on one of those X wings. Or maybe Boss Nass. Oh yeah, man. Not used you just enough. Do the... What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the second official episode to Stargrift Mondays with Mauler. Oh, I thought it was our third. Is it our second? It's our third, but your thumbnail guy put episode two, so I'm just gonna go with it. Oh yeah, you can change that. I Idea. Know. I didn't want to. <laughs> It's gonna fuck everything up. Are we on two or three? <laughs> well, uh, we're on three. God damn it! I have to change it. Hold on. I see. It's all right. You can do it in post or later. Yeah. All right. I'll do it later. Welcome to uh, welcome to episode three. Today we're going to talk <laughs> about Rebel Moon. Yes, we and are. how it's the new Star Wars. I just woke up about twenty minutes ago. So really, damn. Mm -hmm. You do live on a weird schedule. You're like weirder yeah, than I me. Do. Yeah. No, I literally just woke up. My face is all. Sleepy. I'm doing Christmas all day. Christmas things. That's nice. Yeah. Family, yeah. friends, celebrating presents, all that jazz. And then I was like, and now I'll come home and talk about Rebel Moon. Sounds like a great day. A <laughs> great end to the day. <laughs> yeah. Nice little nightcap. Mm -hmm. Did you get everything you want? I got a bunch of like puzzles. And I was like, mm. sure, I guess. You know, because uh, with my family at this point, they're like, what do you want? And I was like, I don't know, 4K is my favorite films. That's kind of where I'm at now. Collections, you know? Yeah. And sometimes they're like, we'll throw some, some brain teasers in just to see what it does. And I'm like, yeah, all right, fine. Dude, sometimes they give you like knockoff um, Rubik's Cubes. I, I, I like Rubik's Cubes. They're fun. But if you buy the cheap ones, they fucking, oof. Nothing that pisses me off faster than cheap Rubik's Cubes. Well, they don't turn. Yeah, they jam up all the time. <laughs> They suck. I hate those things. It was funny. I was like yeah. fiddling with it and it was not working and I was getting increasingly frustrated. And then my mom was like, well, it's, it's one of the cheaper ones. I was like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> like, I Literally. So you got to take it apart and fix it and lube it up. Oh, pretty much. Those ones yeah. you just give up and it's like, I'll just, I'll just put it on the mantelpiece. So it's, it's a, <laughs> it's the thought that counts at that point. Well, you know which ones I like the, with the string and the loop and you know those ones? In the loop, you know, like a string and a, or anything, right? Um, no, no, <laughs> no, it's like a piece of wood, and like you have to take it through a maze, and there's like a, a metal ring that goes through a, a rope, and you got to think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, those are cool too. Mm -hmm. Chat, you guys know, right? Yeah, they know. Yeah. Yeah. Merry Christmas, as Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. We'll get a lot of them today. <sighs> Makes sense. Lube, yeah, lube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so my Rebel review video is done, but it's being edited. Oh. Um, is yours out? Yeah, the Mula video I actually went out today. It wasn't supposed to go out today because we're supposed to be doing Home Alone 2 today, but oh, it's always a nightmare <laughs> with copyright and shit. So uh, that video got delayed, so we put out our Rebel Moon shit first, which 4K people were listening to us. On Christmas Day. I don't understand that. It was pre-recorded, too, but people hate this movie. Uh, some people. Yeah, they really <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of people. I haven't seen anybody praise it. No, uh, the best I've seen is people be like, part two will fix it. Don't worry, guys. Part two is going to fix it. <sighs> like what they say with Star Wars, man. Oh, I'm tired of part two will fix it, man. There's so many examples at this point. It's crazy. I know. And with Zack know. Snyder, you get the part two will fix it, and also the extended vision will fix it. And the director's cut, yeah. It's like, well, okay. So right off the bat, it was essentially for me, and you guys in the chat will see my review video probably a couple days, but essentially it's like Lord of the Rings meets Star Wars meets Harry Potter meets uh, Seven Samurai. According to Zack Snyder, Robocop too. Yeah, Robocop. Well, yeah, but he, that, like the most interesting character in the movie and you just don't even see him anymore. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I was watching it with a friend of mine, and he said he was like laying out his idea for what the robot's journey would be. Right. And uh, when he shoots the guy in the barn, he was like, "Oh, yeah. so now you'll join the team." And then I was, I was like, "I was like, dude, 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 that's his last yeah. scene. That's it. Exactly. That was, and that was it. He's gone. But then you know we'll probably see him in the yeah, he'll be in part two. But he was just like, "What do you mean this is last scene? That's it. 
We're gonna see him in part two. That'll be a, his time to shine. Though he might be in the extended one, I guess. Doing, uh, doing yeah. collecting his horns or something. Probably, yeah. I could see that. Maybe like kills a deer or something, like a space yeah. deer. Space At the moment, discovering whether or not that's fair. Right. Dude, did you see the, uh, the Turok guy? Yes. <laughs> Literally out of Turok. <laughs> he looks like he's lit. Like, I used to play the crap out of that game when I was a kid. Turok Dinosaur Hunter. He literally, he's just got the same name, looks just like him, and then he bows to the hippogriff. I was like, well, I was watching the watch party. I'm like, that'd be hilarious. I'm like, you got to bow to him, man. He freaking <laughs> bows to him. I'm like, what the hell? There's people, I've there's... seen people say, like, was was Zach, like, was he, re was he honoring it? Did he, does he know how close this is? I have no idea. I, I, I don't know. I, think... I have no idea. For me, like, all those comparisons got really funny when it's like, the Empire destroyed the farm workers' farm life and she had to go to a cantina to pick up a pilot. When I saw that all in, in a row, I was just like, fuck, you know. And a lot of people are like, yeah, but that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean it's bad. And it's like, no, of course, it's just so blatant, like, couldn't have tried yeah. to mix it up a little bit. I know. I was really invested, I think. Well, not really invested, but I was interested the first probably half of the film. And then it just got a bit too much. Like the whole movie was just them kind of getting to getting everyone together. So I feel like if you really want to tell this story, make it another hour long or 45 minutes. Or at least don't have that shit ending. Like what, you know, it's just like <laughs> they get captured and then all of a sudden they're freed. And then she's just like, I can't say she's Ray 2.0 because she at least has backstory, right? She at least has some she's sort got of something going training. on. The whole like she yeah. left the mother world because sure. Okay, here's the problem, uh, uh, and I think we're going to see this going forward. I think everyone has the same backstory. Everybody's loved ones were killed by the mother world. Yeah. And I might, you might be like, well, that could be unifying. It's like, yeah, but like to the point where, you know, General Titus lost all of his guys because of a bad mission with the mother world. The, the right. Kai, the pilot, he lost all of his home world because of the mother world. And then main girl, she lost all of her world because of the mother world. It's like, okay, so you've all got the same motivation. What about Nemesis? Oh, she lost all of her family because of the mother world. It's like, okay. Fine. Snyder tried to explain in an interview why the robot has antlers. Apparently the ro robot went feral. <laughs> what? Have you looked into the things Zack Snyder says about his work? No. No. Not at all. Man of Steel was... I love that movie, but beyond that... um, he is a wacky man. He, he has lots of ideas. He seems to be one of the most friendliest and awesome people to work with, which is great. Yeah, yeah. He Not does. a fan of his work, though. It's, uh, it's kind of how I feel about Ryan Johnson. As far as I know, oh, he's geez. very, very easy to work with. Very fun guy. Yeah, probably. <clears throat> but, I mean... Yeah. You're a storyteller, and your stories suck. It's like, well... Yeah, well... You have to learn how to... It's like... You know, I think of storytellers and directors and writers kind of like, uh, you know, John Williams, like a composer. You have to, you're, you're drawing this music out and you're making the person feel something. But if you make it all janky and shitty or whatever, and it's the same as like, okay, you build me up and then you take me all around here and I'm not going to feel good. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to do it in a really good way, so to speak. But I feel like, you know, um, well, with Rebel Moon, for example, one tiny thing that really took me out of it constantly was all the slow-mo. Oh god, there's so much slow. Dude, how often do Too you much. ever see slow mo in slow mo? Oh yeah. Like that's not something you see in movies typically, but Zack Snyder does it. He'll he'll have a scene that's in slow mo and then suddenly he'll get even slower. Even slower. Oh yeah. That's some uh that's some wild stuff. I guess that's cuz he's uh <laughs> he's been set free, you know. Yeah. Every once. I yeah, I mean It's weird because it's like he literally took aspects from all the films that I enjoy and put them into one new story, but I feel like it just wasn't executed well with the, and again, part one, like it was so Rogue One, so, so Andor at the end where it's like, he's like, we have now, <laughs> we I have now ca caused a shift in the universe or whatever. He's like, we have, we have provided hope for everyone. This is a small victory. And I'm like, all right, so this is Andor basically. Like a really shit Andor, though. Let's be honest. Like I, the reason I like Andor so much is the characters. I don't know what the fucking who the characters yeah. are in this. Did you not find it hilarious that Titus and Nemesis didn't talk after they joined the team? Yeah, they didn't talk at all. They didn't even have an opinion Did on you... anything that happened. No, no. 
That was nope. that's absolutely fucking nuts to me. Like, um, I don't know how you feel about this, but like, my biggest issue with the film as a whole is the characters, the characterization. I, I think the most you get is for the main girl, but even then, I'm not entirely sure who she is. I know what happened to her, but I'm not entirely sure like what she values. Uh, what was her name? Cora. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought it was a little bit unbelievable that she just is so good at eating yeah. the shit out of every guy possible. Yeah, that was lame. I was hoping that they would uh, allow her to set the place up so that she could out outflank them all and trick them all and do different kinds of tactics. But no, she basically goes brute force on him. Just head on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no, a no. moment where two of them come at her from either side and she holds both of them off at the same time. And, you know, friends of mine were like, they'll, they'll reveal she's enhanced. I was like, I hope they do. That would make things a little, uh, you know, less cringe, but nope, she's just... She's not. And that's the thing, someone would be like, well, she's trained. It's like, yeah, but all of them were trained, so it doesn't really help. Yeah. No, I know. I... I, I don't know. I'm waiting for the next one. I said, well, no, I'm not really waiting, actually. <laughs> Why am I lying? <laughs> I'm not waiting. <laughs> but I'm like, you know, I just feel like, like at the end, what was the bad guy's name? Oh, which one? The Nazi? Uh, Noble? That was his surname. I don't remember his first oh, name. Okay, yeah, Noble. Yeah, him coming back? Okay, who cares? Why uh, can't we have, like, a bigger bad guy? Did you not you know, get like, um, Revenge of the Sith vibes from the scene where the ship is arriving down and he's, like, dying on the floor uh, at, the, like, the shore of some beach and they drag him onto a stretcher and then he's been brought into, like, a facility that's horrifying oh, yeah. and there's, like, screaming and then they're like... Just get him working, get him, get him fixed, do whatever you have to. And it's like his heart's stopping, his brain is stopping. It's like, brah, then he's like screaming. I was just like, okay, <laughs> like this ain't no yeah. Vader, okay, you guys. A little like... bit, yeah, right. Well, who was the guy that he was talking to in the vision? Balisarius. Okay, who's this? Uh, according to the opening, Balisarius is the senator that took over when the king and queen were assassinated. Got it. Okay, so basically, his main motivation is do what he wants, or else he dies. Like, I think there needs to be a bit more of a motivation than that. Uh, yeah, it seems that Balisarius just wants to take over stuff. That's all I've really got so far. No, I mean Noble. Same for Noble. Like, need... Noble is just an extension of Balisarius. Like, he's got nothing as well. He's, he's super evil and wants to take over stuff. Yeah. You know how in... Was it Avengers or was it Infinite? Um, no, no, it was... Um, what's the movie? Which one? With the, with the raccoon and Guardians of the Galaxy. Of the Galaxy. Is, there's Ronan, right, who mm -hmm. was badass. And then there's Thanos that comes in once Ronan dies. I feel like that would have been great if we had something like that where, okay, this noble guy dies, and then we got someone even bigger coming in. But they would have had to kind of bring him into the story at some point in the middle or the beginning to kind of allude that there is a bigger power, there's a, there's a bigger bad guy, and he could have been an alien. I think that would have been better. Well, if you remember, um, Ronan... His motivation was uh, he hated the peace treaty between the Kree and the Nova Corps, right? And he wanted to right. destroy it. Right. Which is, to me, you know, infinitely more interesting than him being like, I want to destroy planets because brr. Right. Yeah. I know. You know, the, the Mother World, that was a tough one. The opening few lines, I was already thrown. It was like, they reigned, the, the King and Queen's family bloodline reigned for a thousand generations. Then mm -hmm. they were assassinated, and so the bloodline was broken. Like, really? Those Is two it? died, and that was it for the bloodline when they've been going for a thousand generations? There wasn't an uncle? Or, <laughs> like, or a cousin? <laughs> yeah, you'd think there'd be somebody. But... Someone? <laughs> like, the That's Fresh someone? Prince? Like, yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, and then, you know, you, so you, you sort of take that on good faith. You'd be like, all right, that's the case then. Don't you think it's really fucking odd that this tiny settlement filled with approximately 30 to 50 settlers who are harvesting grain, just enough to mm -hmm. mainly feed themselves, are selling their grain at this point to both the mother world and the leading rebel army. Yeah. How embarrassingly stupid is that? I was like, <laughs> how That's could good. you possibly be... Great way to die. They have a whole planet for farming cobalt. They don't have a, f a planet for grain. You have to get this settlement that has barely any surplus, or at least as far well, as you know? I, to be honest, I didn't, because that was, that, that'd be so stupid. I kind of took it as like, they just want to bully people around. 
They just want to collect worlds. That's kind of how well, I took it. Unfortunately, the the reason they give us is that their supply chains have been attacked by the rebels, so they need more sources of uh, food, and that this is so why they find here. the the one shitty little planet who has like twelve and it people. It also farming. happens to be the place where she lives, which is she's ex mother world. So you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's already just like uh, okay, More convenient, I guess. Yeah. But also just yeah. really stupid. Why would you? They say like, oh, we produce twelve thousand bushels, and we want ten thousand. He's like, well, we'll starve. So it's just like, so you're going to take the 10 and then let them die. And what was the point of any of this? It's such a weird opening. I was like, what are you... And then, of course, all of the soldiers that get garrisoned there are all hyper evil except one. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I thought it was hilarious. When and then what just... happened to him? He did, no, no nothing, yeah, he's, nothing. he's out. I don't know if he'll be an extended version or something. Or well, maybe know. he'll be in the next one, right? Yeah, maybe he'll be in part two. That'll be, it, well, I guess he definitely will be because that's when they'll be defending that place from the mother world. I almost feel like there's just too much going on like in media today where in movies that is, everything is just kind of done in part one. Like with the seasons that we have in shows, it's like you have the, like we talked about, we have three episodes that could be completed in three episodes, but they drag it out for eight to 12. And same with movies. It's like you have all exposition in the first film and then you go into the next one, and it's like, okay, now it really starts. Why can't we have a bit of that, both of that, we in the first to. one to kind of keep you hooked? Yeah, they used to. I mean, Fellowship of the Ring is like my go-to. It's such a, I know it's, it's way longer, but I mean, at the same time, like, I don't mind if everything is set up in a part one, if it's, there's characters with interesting, it, like, you know when they, let's say, for example, they're like, we're going to go and collect <laughs> To, to rock or whatever the hell his name was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you have all the characters, you know, give their point of view on whether or not that's a good idea. Remember when they're just like, if he lose, if he doesn't tame the thing, you're all my slaves. And they all, they, none of them say anything. They're just like, okay. Yeah. Like, you're all okay with this? <laughs> the yeah. pilot, the guy who's going to betray them later, he's okay with this? Yeah, yeah. okay. He's that like, makes he's sense. Like, all right, sure, fine. Yeah, look, I think there was a ton of plot armor in there, especially with the girl. Yeah. Uh, it, that was just a little too ridiculous. You know, they, you can make her win without making her look invincible or like she has a horseshoe up her ass. Yeah. Right? You can make it so that she's tactical. She knows this yeah. land better than them. She can set traps. She can use a smoke bomb. There's all kinds of things that she could have done. Yeah, go a little home alone. Absolutely. Inspiration for Kevin McAllister. Instead of just <laughs> going at them with an, a hand axe and then hoping for the best. Yeah. That was just, yeah. Well, and she's overpowering all of them and beating the crap out of all of them, and then and then and when they're shooting, they're like point blank shooting at her, but they're like missing. Oh, they're doing that thing. There's a couple of instances where some of them are just waiting and then like going to attack her yeah. and sort of wobbling. So like, uh, I'm too early. Uh, she, I'm gonna... I know, I know, I know, dude. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I, I I hate that kind of choreography. It's like oh, when will choreographers, go, yeah, actually, be good again. It's... I've never understood it, especially for super high budget stuff. I always assume that like you can just hire the best choreographers, aren't you? They can solve your problems. I, yeah. Nick Gillard, man. That's all I gotta do. They hire. He knows the shit. Hire people, I guess, who claim to be pretty good, and then they give them that. Unless Zach, well, is just, that's what he wanted. The uh, choreographer, I believe, for the new Ray film has never actually filmed or directed choreography but she is uh she's a stunt woman i think okay so i mean you, it's not promising mm. fortunately but yeah. i mean hey that's the ray film what do you think of uh the lightsabers i mean <laughs> to be honest it didn't really remind me of lightsabers at all it totally reminded me of them I, uh, it, it, since the trailers, just I don't know, man. Swords that light up and are super hot, like it's just—it's it's pretty almost impossibly difficult to escape uh, evoking lightsabers. But I mean, it reminded me of God of War, Blades of Chaos. I mean, interesting. Those are uh, yeah. less. I mean, the, his at least were like straight. Uh, his his are like right. knifey sword things. But and you right. know, you have the chains and spinning around and stuff. Yeah, I yeah. do love God of War. Like, but uh, yeah. The the thing with her is I wouldn't care at all. I think you should be allowed to have you know, light based weapons or whatever. It's just that that was like the main. I don't know what else to say about Nemesis. She's a she's a funny character to me. She wasn't really good though. She wasn't really great at sword fighting, to be honest. No, she fucks up quite a bit. Um, yeah, 
So does a spider, to be fair. That thing has, yeah, like, I mean. six abilities. To, she's like General Grievous on steroids, and she still couldn't beat the person. Still can like, do anything. Yeah. yeah. Taking the grain is the same thing the USSR did to the Ukraine in Holodomir. Holodomir. Great starvation. Hmm. Um... Yeah, oh, well, so the thing about it is, is that they're not um, being allegorical for that. It's uh, They lie to the Mother World when the Mother World offer them a really, really great setup, which mm -hmm. is give us your surplus and we'll pay you triple in value and you can get new uh, harvesting equipment and, you know, take better care of your people. And their, their leader, for some reason, like I think he says he just doesn't like the Mother World, is like, let's lie to him and tell him that we have no surplus. And then the bad guy is like, well, I can clearly see you guys are well fed and that your fields are huge, so yeah. am I mistaken? And then basically just says, oh, so you've been lying to me. And then he kills him. And it's all very bizarre. I, um, had he just said, yes, <laughs> you can have our surplus for triple value, uh, I guess yeah, that, things would worked out. That other guy was a little bitch. I didn't like him. He ruined him. Ruined. He killed the guy. Oh, you're talking about the bald guy? You're talking about... No, not the bald guy. The the guy who got the bald guy killed. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. He kind of he says something that's in complete opposite to what the bald guy said. But to be fair, Literally. I still think what the bald guy said was dumb as fuck. Yeah, he should have just been like, okay, well, look, we're kind of outnumbered here, so yeah, I mean, sure, yeah, you can we'll have our surplus, surplus and no yeah. problem. And then they could talk about how later, like, what they want to do as plans if they want to sabotage and whatever. But like, it's yeah. it's a force that is a hell of a lot stronger than you. You're farmers. <laughs> yeah. It, it's this is an empire. That like rules galaxies. I mean, we, yeah. What are you gonna Those do? What I mean, I was, I was getting confused because like she starts to leave and she's like, "Can you believe it?" They're all talking about how they're gonna like submit to the mother world, and then she, the, he's like, "Maybe we should fight then." And I was like, "What do you? You guys are like a handful of farmers. You're they're like they're pitchforks. space Nazis. They're, they're, they yeah. have interstellar travel. They can wipe yeah. you off the face of the earth in a second or whatever planet, Rebel Moon, <laughs> whatever." Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's so weird, and then it's like, yeah, but what if we collect a handful of mercenaries, then we can fight them? It's like, no. You know what I think this film had going against it is the fact that it pitted itself so hard against Star Wars, saying it's going to be the new Star Wars or it's going to be the next Star Wars or whatever. I think pitching it like that, oh man, it just brought so many of the Star Wars fans out to kind of gun for it, and yeah, yeah. you just can't. Even though so many people hate Disney Star Wars, you still have the first six films that people are very passionate about, and you can't really compare anything to that. So it's like, if you're going to compare anything to Star Wars, it has to be something super revolutionary, which it can't really be because everything's sort of been done already. Yeah, everything's getting compared back all the time yeah, now. All the time. Everything's fresh. When Star Wars came out, man, I, I imagine that must have been like the most revolutionary thing. Well, it was, but at the same time, its inspirations were super clear to a lot of, uh, sort of film-obsessed people, like, I guess. But the general yeah, public um, weren't as familiar yeah. at all. No. I mean, like, Dune fans and stuff like that were like, oh, okay, this is kind of a... Well, and Seven Samurai, uh, or yeah. rather Kurosawa fans would, would be able to see a lot of influence. And that's what a lot of people are saying about this. It's like, yeah, this thing took influence just like Star Wars did. And it's like, yeah, Big I know, time. but I feel like Star Wars... There's, there's like, a difference... Where you mix up a bunch of your own inspirations and create something versus mix up a bunch of inspirations and create nothing. Yeah. That's what this feels like. Yeah. Um, what do you think of the cantina scene? It was like a gay bar. <laughs> <laughs> the gay pigs? Yeah, it was like... <laughs> yeah, I know. Come on, I don't let know. me have him. By morning, he'll be begging for more. And I'm like... Uh, yeah, of all the things you could have spent time on, we could have got to know the characters, but instead they had to have a pig man hit on the guy, and then you put a knife to her throat, and I was like, damn, is that going to have... And then she beats him up, and you're like, okay, yeah, sure. Well, yeah, and like, the, what, the guy can't defend himself? Well, no, he's kind of a... He's a bitch. He is a bitch, he's a but he's the only one who tries to save the girl in the, in the cobalt world with the spider. Remember that? Oh, yes, I remember this. Yeah. He walks in front of the girl to protect her, even to the point where he thinks he's going to die, and none of the others help, and they have guns, by the way. Yeah, he's got heart. <laughs> yeah, but, like, I'm almost moving on from him. It's like, what the fuck was our main character doing? What, what was the pilot doing? What was, uh, what was right. Tirok doing? <laughs> like, none of them helped. They all just didn't care. And then Tirok yeah. is like, wow, that was awesome. And then she's like, <laughs> this is not honorable. This is not Ugh. good. 
He was rubbing oil on himself. He's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, well. Yeah. I thought that, um... I, yeah. I made a joke about the... I was like, oh, what if what if the dude in A New Hope <laughs> went up to Obi-Wan and was like, give me Luke, give me Luke. He'll be begging for more by the morning. Mm. Yeah, it would have improved Star Wars. <laughs> Man, that's where the comparisons really came in for me, right? So you have... They're looking for a pilot. They get directed... Chewy, Obi Wan does, and then he moves on to Han Solo, and then he's like, "Holy shit, what a perfect mark! Like they're gonna pay me a lot uh, to take them to a place mm. I can get them pretty easily, and I'm in debt." Yeah. It all lines up, and you can see how they met. We're all golden. I is a is a guy who's made a deal with the bounty hunters who are working for the Mother World ahead of these guys coming in. So I guess he just sells them information, right? That's that's what he's doing. He's an opportunist. They do show you a shot of him making a deal before they come in. It's like, okay, cool, got right. that. Yeah. He hears her say, because she's a dumbass, she announces, I'm looking for General Titus because I'm hoping to make a team to fight the Mother World. It's like, what What the fuck are you doing? That's like hyper illegal and dangerous and you're letting everybody know what your plans are. It's like, she's just not very brain trust. Okay. And by the way, did you catch it? She, uh, when Kai asks to clarify that, uh, her friend, the pussy guy, he's like, no, we're, we're just humble farmers. <laughs> Yeah, which is the smart thing to do, and then she goes, yeah. "No, we are freedom fighters. We're going to battle the mother world." It's like, oh, you fucking idiot! Oh my God, <laughs> you're stupid. Why would you do this? And then after saying he's an opportunist, he says, "Eh, you know, I don't need money. It's fine. I just want to help you." That's it's like the most suspicious shit. Yeah, ever. not that's not sh that's not sus at all, man. It's, and then no, oh, we, okay. We get cool. like zero scenes of his character up until uh, before the third act, where he says, "You inspire me to be honorable." Like, what the fuck? I didn't know if that was yeah. bad writing or if he was super evil. And I was like, oh, he's and super he evil, right? Okay. just turns on them completely. Yeah. You know, but, like, the whole time. So. Yeah. And, I, and yeah. I have a feeling that Zack was like, see, it's like Han Solo, but he's actually a bad guy. Hmm. Yeah, man. Oh. Yeah, so, I mean, look, he, I think he just took a lot of inspiration from a ton of films and then just switched a few things around here and there. And... Yeah, but he didn't give anyone characters. No, it was it was like the whole film was exposition, but it was mainly just about finding each character and then giving a little backstory on who they are. Or a little character development on, you know, like freeing the hippogriff and this and that. God, that... But it's just, yeah, it's it, which was kind of, I don't know. He was so weird, because when, they, when he's, they release the chains on it, it doesn't fly away, and we were like, oh, maybe it can't fly, like it's uh, the wings are busted. Hmm. Then it flies, and we were like, okay. And it lands, and it just chills out. And it's like, why isn't it flying away? And then the guy tries to fly it, and it, it hits him off and kills him. We're like, why isn't it flying away? Why would... What was all of that? Just, and then he's just like, add a girl. Yeah. <laughs> what pretty the hell sure, just happened? <laughs> like, pretty sure Buckbeak was tortured like crazy there, so it would have flown away immediately. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, see ya. I Never know. come back. I was struggling to follow all of it. Go to planet. Yeah. Oh, dude, the amount of exposition dumps were insane. He has like no finesse with giving us information. Yeah. And then remember when she was like, she was like, I'm telling you this because I want. It's like, well, no, you're kind of just telling the audience. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's like, I, I didn't ask for any of that information, he's, but thanks. his intro to it was just, what's going to happen? What's the mother will going to do? And then she's like, right. So, a hundred years ago, when blah, blah, you're like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> just all he wants to know is what they're going to do, which is. By the way, raise the planet, which was pretty fucking interesting to me, right? They are strapped for resources somewhat. That's what they established right at the beginning. The mother world was destroyed slash mined for resources, so they expand their empire. And then they say the supply chains are getting hit by the rebels, so they need even more. And what do you remember what they do to the planet with the king that was hiding the rebels? No. They hyper nuke it. They raise the entire planet. Now, this is a planet they describe as having thrived for 10,000 years, or even generations, I can't remember which one they said. Why would you spend the ordinance to destroy an entire planet in order to destroy all of those resources <laughs> when you're strapped, or at least stressed for resources? I was just like, oh, they're like the First Order, they're just really stupid. Yeah, it didn't make much sense with the whole grain thing, but I mean, aren't there other planets that have lots of grains too? They should. I don't understand how the mother world wouldn't have farming planets. No way they need this 
tiny settlements extra bushels. There's just no way I buy yeah, that's, that. Yeah, it was so unbelievable to me that I'm like, well, they're just doing this because they want to get some power or control over different worlds. And I was like, all right, no problem. They want to weasel their way in. But I guess not. By Whatever. the way, we've already pretty much covered the whole movie. Like, there's not a lot left. There isn't much left. No, there's not really much else to talk about. So, thanks for coming, guys. <laughs> we... <laughs> I worked on a different project at the same studio when Rebel Moon was shot. The props and costumes looked cheap as hell, and predictably, the product came out bad. Netflix is incompetent as hell. Well, it was, uh, what, $200 million? $150? Uh, Which is was... insane. Yeah, it was, it, it's still a ridiculous amount of money. You'd think the better prep and stuff, but... Um... Netflix is incompetent. I mean, some of Netflix's shows look pretty good, right? Mm, yeah. <laughs> I think. Yeah. But with it, this pulls on. Moobler, please talk about the funny scream lady. All right. So funny scream lady when, uh, when Ray Fish's character <laughs> dies in a really funny way because he tries to like spear the giant warship and somehow that fucking works. And then he misses because the guy moves his head. Do you remember this? The pilot? Yeah. And then he shoots him. I thought it was really funny. And then he has to stab him again to get him. Oh, that lady. Yeah, she looked like lady, uh she, looks she looked like like, <laughs> like out of um I am legend. Yes, yes, she did. It looked like her, her jaw was extending further like, than it should be. Able to. I was like the way a friend oh. of mine described it was holy shit, we got a really like emotional scene from a character we met 2 minutes ago about a character we met 3 minutes ago. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, who the fuck are any of these people? They're all like, no. Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah, what, he, was... <laughs> what he said, uh, pilots get to your ships. I had an actual flashback to uh, Phantom Menace, where she's like, get to your ships. And everyone's like, you know, it's the war in the middle of um, the Feed Palace or whatever it is, uh, the, yeah. the, the the dock or whatever. And, and, and several of them might get hit by blasters. Many get in and the war begins, that sort of stuff. In this... Mm. You've got like five pilots, maybe at maximum, and an enormous warship just looking at them. Yeah. They start climbing in, and the whole time I was like, the warship's right there, the warship's right there, the warship's right there. And then it just goes, well, I, I get... And then the bad guy's like, shoot them. But then the warship goes, yeah, okay. <laughs> just blows <laughs> <them> all <laughs> <up. I> was like, <laughs> What was the point of all that? <laughs> like, I think, for me, probably the... Like, hmm... I liked half of it, man, and then the other half it just got a little bit too. It was just too much. I kind of just... hated the whole thing, but really, eh? it's uh, my biggest bane with any story is no characters. If you don't, if you give me one, I can pass through a, a whole story. But when there's like none, she uh, she was doing nothing for me. I couldn't get anything out of her. Uh, main no, lady, yeah, she was she wasn't. was like she was like captain protagonist. She doesn't. Yeah, she really wasn't. Nothing else going on. The pilot no. guy, Kai, like I said, I was just suspicious of him from the get-go. I thought he was just badly written, but then I was like, no, he was just evil. Right, of course, yeah. And that was that. Uh, Charlie yeah. Hunnam, I think the actor is, he was the most interesting person to me. Uh, yeah. He's gone now. Um, the villain was hilarious. He was out of a, he was like Skeletor. Well, why, why, yeah, why was, why was, why did he have a tie? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> what is that? Why, why would you have a skinny tie? You're an alien. I get really tired of like, you know, like when, when, when they plug him in, all the rainbow colored tubes, they're all blah, blah, blah. Then he transports to an ice planet to talk with, blah, blah. I was just like, yeah, what, 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 what is, whatever. The scream lady. <laughs> the scream lady was funny. Yeah, um, I ain't gonna lie. I was invested. I was definitely into it. I was like, hey, cool. This is not bad. I like this. And then it got to the point. The ending, man. The ending was just so lame for me. I was like, okay, they're, they're well, fighting. They're all, and... um, Captured in those old machines, I legit was like, this is over. There's nothing they can do. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, I was like, cool, so let's see how they get out of this. And then the guy puts the gun in the machine, but then when he takes it out, the machine opens. I feel like, shouldn't that be okay, so yeah, some faulty programming? Like <laughs> this, is some, this is some autistic mechanical stuff that I love to talk about. So these machines seem so retarded, dude. Like the, the way they work is they grab someone up and they're captured. And it's like, okay, that seems pretty efficient. They come with a little dart pack that paralyzes people. Now, to paralyze, you pull the trigger, but if you want to release yeah. them, the gun goes in the back and you have to turn it, or just turn it in general. Just lock it in, yeah. Why would the control for releasing them off this thing be in the gun that delivers the paralysis rather than the machine itself? Yes. That seems weird. And then, well, I guess it's, it's supposed to release right after they get paralyzed. Which is also really weird. If you remember, the guy who gets paralyzed, he slams down into the floor and it's like... 
I could have fucking killed him. If he like if he like, slam yeah. his skull on the floor, you know what I mean? It's like why would it be He's built dead. that way? That's weird. He's can't really get so that guy didn't die he just got paralyzed right no that's why i thought he got uh, yeah, killed right. but then he was like no he's paralyzed um so yeah. then it's even weirder because why did that guy how do you know how those work he's from like a farming settlement seemingly his whole life why does he know how the mother world sci-fi capture device mm, maybe work? he read the lcd screen or something what lcd screen <laughs> Oh the, oh, the screen there was said, like there was an LCD say, like, screen. Please turn, please turn. It said like insert here and turn to sever the spine. Well, at that point, if it were that blatant, then the bad guys are just hyper retarded again, which sucks. It's possible. It's really weird. If you watch that scene slowly, he releases her, and then he turns around and kills the pilot. Kills the he, yeah, and he's like, oh. <laughs> he like jumps down and like hits someone, and then like. War starts, and it's just like, but how? She's the only one that's free, and then it just Dude, sort of shows it, everyone getting as freed. As like, soon on? as the thing opens up, there were like fifty guns yeah, on her. There was like, <laughs> oh, she's dead. Okay, cool, yeah. done. Like, no, she's literally narrowly missing every blast. Oh, there's loads of just, that. Yeah, just a little too, a little too much. Like they could have blocked plasma with a wooden table i know i saw i was like okay so the cantina fight i was like all right cool we're getting somewhere this is kind of dope and then it just got to the point where i was like hmm it's a lot of plot armor here how do you block plasma with wood <laughs> but then it goes through f flesh and people and I, yeah you know. like, what are these paint guns paintballs uh, apparently did you like roman planet <laughs> you know it was funny that they made him a gladiator again <laughs> <laughs> Which Gladiator is my is like trolling me. favorite movie. Like, yeah, I love Gladiator, and he's in there, and so I put him in there, and he's a Gladiator. It's like, dude, <laughs> come on. It's like, is this supposed to be a continuation of the Gladiator? <laughs> like, perhaps, <laughs> literally, it could be, could be the sequel. Yeah, well, I don't know. As <sighs> there was lots of elements that I was like, okay, cool, and then there were many elements where it just the execution wasn't done well, in my opinion. It was just a little bit too. But again, like I'm saying this this was pitched for Star Wars. I mean, I wonder like would it have been better if there was the force, if there were lightsabers, if there were this and that? What was his idea for it? What changed? That's I think something that could be pretty cool if he discussed it. Cause then maybe that's what was missing. Well you reckon like if it were a Star Wars story it would have been better? Yeah, imagine if like these were all force users that they found. Maybe like a couple were force users, one was a Mandalorian. Uh, one was like a scoundrel. One was a droid. I mean, I think that would have been sick. The problem is he can still do all of that in his own IP. Yeah, he could. But this is what he does. Like his his biggest problem for me has always been his character writing. Like, beyond, I don't understand what's wrong with him. Like, he, like he refused. Did you see Army of the Dead? I can't remember if you said. No, I didn't. That was so awful. It's no. another one where he had full control. And uh, it's the character writing is horrible. Oh, didn't they say he said that this is connecting Army of the Dead? Yeah, it's in the same universe. <laughs> and that's a zombie Army movie? Of the is a, yeah, more of a contemporary zombie apocalypse movie, and it's connected to this where we have no fucking clue when this is set. It's like, what the hell difference does that. Uh, that's like setting Gladiator in the same universe as Star Wars. It's like, well, actually, no, because that could make some sense if Gladiator's some distant planet that's, that's happening makes sense. on, you know? But, like, yeah, with this, sense. yeah, I have no idea what he's trying to achieve other than maybe Earth is in this universe somewhere and that uh, we're going to bump into it at some point. Great. And Dave Batiste will be there. <laughs> Why not? Why not? What can we do to help with your Luke Skywalker project? Lucasfilm will never give us what we want as long as they have Kathy in charge. We know you can do better. Force ain't female. It's all of us. Uh, well, I'm even paying for it myself. So you can super chat. You can become a member on the channel for 99 cents. You can, or however much you want. You can, uh, which it'll be released earlier for you guys, our members. Uh, you can buy the merch. You can watch the videos. I mean, if you don't have any money, just watch the videos once a day or however many times a day. Uh, enjoy the free content. But if you want to go above and beyond, then yeah, I mean support in other ways like super chats and stuff like that and merch yeah appreciate it <laughs> eh. did you guys find kai's charlie hunnam's accent insanely distracting yes. just let him have the same accent he had in gentleman's act 
Yeah, I don't. Know I don't really remember is. him talking much, to be honest. He didn't have many lines, but he's charming. Yeah. Him and just yeah, he was going for like an Irish, kid Irish. I I don't know right. why they can just normal accent, especially the accent he had in the Gentleman. This is the guy from uh, Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. They ruined Snide ver Vision five hour version will be great. <laughs> it's the studio's fault. The weapon Admiral Noble used was literally a replacement hip. Yeah, his like stick cane thing, like a I don't know what bone that would be, but it, it, yeah, it looked like a bone, it. yeah. Yeah. Merry Christmas Theory and Longman. May the Mondays never be grifted with the holiday cheer. Forever be grifted. Oh, Merry Christmas, B Man. We're gonna do a GTA stream probably later at some point. Yeah, the Irish accent wasn't the best. What's up, Jason GT? Does YouTube keep any of the Super Chat money? Just trying to maximize the amount you receive. Yeah, YouTube gets 30%. And then on these streams, Mauler and I split them. We have a split. So YouTube will take 30, and then we split. And yeah. So yeah. Yeah, they take memberships too. But then they got it. Everyone, they, everyone gets taxed, right? And then the government well, and, taxes you. And somewhat, <laughs> like, I've tried to, you know, I know everyone's like, fucking, it's my money. It's like, YouTube does provide a pretty awesome platform in a lot of ways. Yeah. yeah. I like to think that maybe they do deserve at least somewhat of a cut. As to how much they should get, other thing. I think 30% is a bit steep, but, I mean, at the same time, I can't even imagine what their costs are every day to just keep running. Yeah. You know, but, again, they've given me, uh, given me my, my career, so. Thanks. But yeah, I mean, if you guys want to support in other ways, you know, you send super chats, you send, you buy merch, um, memberships, <clears throat> and then there's, you know, theory sabers and I'm releasing another saber in a couple of weeks here and which will be much more affordable for you guys and just all the other stuff I'm trying to do. Yeah. But did I tell you, but I didn't tell you about the Luke thing I'm doing. I don't know. Did you? No. I kind of announced it yesterday for like Christmas mm. for people. Yeah, so we're redoing Heir to the Empire, but with AI and deep fake. All right. Yeah. So we're going on tests so far. Is it looking good? Yeah, it looks great. Looks great. Some people are like, oh, it looks better than Luke in Mando. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, as long as he looks as, you know, better than. I, sorry, I just thought he looked bad in Mando's <laughs> finale. The Boba yeah. Fett one was like a clear upgrade. Yeah. Oh, yeah, big time. Um, but here, let me pop it up on the... <clears throat> ...system. Its chambers holding several tons of artifacts and other imperial This is just like research. a test. I've so arranged the transfer for all of this evidence to be transported to Coruscant for immediate analysis. General Wedge Antilles is overseeing the transportation. Skywalker out. New Republic Mission Log 627. This is General Skywalker reporting. I've located another one of the Emperor's hidden bunkers in the Pana system. Its chambers holding several tons of artifacts and other Imperial research. I've arranged the transfer for all of this evidence to be transported. Yeah. Is it supposed to look like it's low FPS or is the lip sync still yeah. being worked on? It's, uh, it's still being worked on, but it's supposed to look like it's from the 80s. Right. So... Yeah. Yeah, this guy does some really great work. <clears throat> I'll show you what he's working on. For example, there's this. A vast evil is approaching. What will happen is unavoidable. Return to a galaxy far, far away. R2, is that you? We're inside an Imperial dungeon ship. That storm took Luke. Nobody stops until we find him. Yeah, Han looks a little shitty, but you know it's a work in progress. It's some, yeah, it's something, man. It's you know, it'll be it'll be fun, it'll be cool. It's you, <clears throat> but I saw you die. It is not the first time I died, nor will it be the last. <laughs> Such are the mysteries of the dark side of the Force. You know, um, it's you.
when he, yeah, so, in Rise of Skywalker, when he said, I've died before, I'm pretty sure I burst out laughing. It was just yeah, like, that I've shit's so funny. Before. Yeah, so, I mean, these are all tests that he's done on his own, and then, you know, once I put my money into it, I'm sure he's going to, uh, he's already upped the ante quite a bit with everything that he's <clears throat> working on. But, yeah, I think there's some new content. Well, then, I lost him. That is most disappointing. He got lucky. Did you bring me anything of value, Bounty Hunter? Just his name. Skywalker. We're done here. Yep, a lot of cool stuff that's going to be done for the channel in 2024. Commander Ville, I have a question that you must answer truthfully. Uh, yes, sir. The Emperor programmed the clones with an order to eliminate the Jedi. Uh. Have you been programmed with a similar order to attack me, if the Emperor commands? Sir, even if there was such an order, I do not have the authority to divulge. I actually prefer the sound of that beta voice than the uh, feature one they use. Yeah, so that Vader voice is actually a really talented actor, uh, voice actor. It's Ryan Golden VO. Yeah. Shout out to Ryan. Yeah, him and uh, the guy that I use for Vader, my Vader, Vader series, Jesse Gomez. Unreal. So good. Wait, what? How can you tell him if you choke him? What do you mean? Yeah, so hope you guys will enjoy the content coming in 2024, baby. If she was an old Sith apprentice, that's why she wasn't killed, caused because the the sensed the force in her and trained her, then something happened and she hiding. Uh what are they talking about? Mm -hmm. Who? Sith Apprentice as well. Is this about some... I'm not sure. I'm very confused. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Jens. Merry Christmas, men. F Rebel Moon. Christmas. I just realized who Mahler is. Oh my god, you guys linked up. I've been watching Mahler vids for some time now. Very cool to see you guys together. Thank you guys for putting your energy into this. Yeah, I mean, over time, people will start to realize that we have a show on Monday, I guess. <laughs> I still see people like in the chat be like, wait, you've met Mahler? <laughs> like, yeah. Catching up day by day. It'll probably take a month. Probably into January it'll become a thing. It's weird, like uh how your own audience like cycle in waves almost. In terms of seeing they, stuff. They do. They cycle in waves depending on Star Wars. Well that and just in general, I mean, like you know, this uh this live yeah. stream, like like you just said, it's probably gonna take a month, maybe even more for because there's plenty of people who like watch you know, everything. And then there's people who watch like every once in a while. Yeah. So too. This is like the fifth stream that me and Theory have done though. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. I should have probably changed that in the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, let me try to change it now. Episode three. Is this episode three? Yeah, I think so. I think we All right. oh. <laughs> it is okay, now. Let me, let me... Yeah. What do you got planned later today? Well, I guess it's nighttime for you. Yeah, I was going to say sleep, basically. <laughs> done here. Yeah, well, I think I we'll be done pretty soon. Everyone's doing Christmas stuff anyways. I'm honestly surprised there's only 1,700 people with everything going on. Uh, if you guys yeah, can hit the like button, that'd be great. Appreciate it. Will we get Star Grift on Christmas? This is the... Oh, we still... Yeah, of course you do. Well, yeah. <laughs> this is what it is, yeah. Here we are. Yeah, uh, Christmas in Britain for another 10 minutes. That's wild, yeah. Did you guys watch the AI sequel trilogy Reimagining on the YouTube channel Prism? Yes, I saw that. Yeah, it was great. I think I had that recommended to me. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, there's three of them. 
And it's sad that the legacy of the sequel trilogy is just everybody making different and better ones. No one likes what it is. Even the people who like it, quote unquote, don't like it. The sequel trilogy? Yeah, like the people who love it, there's not like um a building on it for culture. It's more so just tolerating it. It's like, yeah, I like the sequel. I like Ray. Yeah, Ray's awesome. Ray. Mahler, I I could go into detail on on what I think about sequel trilogy fans, to be honest. <laughs> Is it all nice stuff? It's not good or bad. It's just um, what I perceive from you know tweets and whatnot from 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 people from their patterns. So, yeah. Well, hey, I mean, I don't know. You want to talk about it? I don't feel like blowing up on Twitter again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I leave it to you. It's up to you. We're gonna leave that for Andor season two. Mm. Mahler, have you guys done uh, EFAB? Or what does it mean, EFAB? Probably, yeah. EFAB. On the original trilogy, I viewed the one you did with Lord of the Rings films. I love Lord of the Rings, but Star Wars is number one. Well, uh, I did ask people what they would like to... That's the first time we've done anything like that, um, the eight-hour one. That was insane, and it took forever to edit. So we were like, we'd be willing to do it for other stuff. And a lot of people have said, would you do it for Star Wars? And I was like, fuck yeah, we'd do it for Star Wars. Dude, do it for each episode. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll probably do it trilogy by trilogy or something. Maybe yeah. we'll be wacky and do all of them in one video. That would take forever. It would, but maybe for EFAP 100. Wait, uh, where is your Lord of the Rings video? On oh, it's, it's on Mueller. Oh. Because I saw it pop up and I'm like, oh, he finished it. A lot of people thought it meant like a main channel video. So I wouldn't mind How do you differentiate? Where where is it? Oh, Merry Christmas. No. Lord of the Rings. Oh yeah. Oh there it is. It's like two hundred thousand views already. <laughs> well, fucking. It's nice that people really liked it because we we were hoping like please don't let that much wet blood and tears go into something that people are like. Yeah, that was alright. <laughs> like yeah. oh shit. That's the worst when you spend time on a video. And then there's other videos that I spend like no time on and it gets like a million views and I'm like. Dude, uh, I do like three FAP episodes. Some of them get an immense amount of prep, resources and sources, obviously, and then like uh, mashing stuff up, remixing and, and getting a couple things edited ahead of time, then reacting to them. Then sometimes we'll just be like, we'll watch a video of someone like Boogie being retarded, and then that's like the most <laughs> popular episode of the whole year. And it's like, well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. I know. I know. It's weird. I remember I did this one video when I started. Um, Mr. Bones is what this droid that basically. Lucasfilm took and they made it inspired from HK47. And that video got like I think over a million views or something. And I'm like, <laughs> why, man? What the hell? And then I'll work 16 hours on a fan fiction and I would get like 2,000 views. And I was like, ugh, whatever. Stupid. Stargriff for the win. Yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this new podcast. You know, we're, I like it so far. I think it's the great. The vibe uh, we, we've got for people is that we're very chill to listen. Back and forth. Yeah, a lot of people say they put it on when they want to go to bed. Which is a compliment. Yeah, that's great. Harry Griffin. Is Archangel with the biggest super chat of the day. Thank you so much. I don't give a fiddler's fuck about Star Wars anymore, but love watching Moobles and Star Wars Theory treating it like poop because poop cactus. <laughs> Mahler does <laughs> poop cactus <laughs> because it hurts when it comes out. I don't even... <laughs> It's just the worst. <laughs> Poop cactus is just the fucking worst. Yeah, I guess that would suck. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know... Oh, I meant Korra. If it was Star Wars, this pod brought me back. Oh, right on. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, no, you, you can see how a lot of this is repurposed from probably his initial ideas of submitting a Star Wars story. I get you. Yeah, he probably just had to erase a whole ton of stuff. But I, I do think having a crew of a force user, a Mandalorian, smuggler, maybe even like a dark force user or something, or like a Sith or whatever. Putting them all into into one, I think would be pretty interesting to see for a overall greater cause. I think that would have been cool. Absolutely. But you gotta be able to break cash. More people think that's a lot easier. I mean... If anything, in the past like five years, I've discovered that apparently it's fucking difficult as hell for loads of people. 
amazing character, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. My girlfriend doesn't like the slow vibe, but I'm enjoying it. Should we should we speak faster? I mean, we, I can get some strobe lights in here. And... Do it. <laughs> Need a tinge of uh, tinge of Arnold Arnold T in here. So you just meant Arnie Arnold. No, you know the streamer Arnold. No, I don't, I don't think I do. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, I streamed with him a little bit ago. His stuff is super energetic. I'll show you. <laughs> Can I get the vibe now? Oh, I think it's someone's birthday. Guy, yeah. Oh gosh, no, we're just uh, trying to show the dangers of mobile gaming spending. Yeah. Each of these has two hundred dollars on. How close can I get? Kind of turns into a money pit. And that's what I'm here for. To make sure you don't fall into that same trap. Let us embark on our journey. A Star Wars galaxy of heroes. But seeing you again, my friend. You know what really annoys me? Yeah. I like his stuff. It's very entertaining. But very high energy. High energy. I, 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 don't, I don't feel like putting that much energy into these. <laughs> <laughs> got the low energy. Yeah. We, calm energy. We, we got the calm energy. Yeah. Not the calm energy, the calm energy. Meditation. Where Qui Gon right before he dies? <laughs> the calm meditation. Yeah, but hopefully we don't die. we will be good. Hopefully you know, we're right. Figuratively speaking, uh, and and literally that'd be nice. <laughs> Play this game in twenty fifteen. Yeah, apparently it makes a lot of money. A lot of a mobile lot of games too. Did you watch the Clone Wars two D? Uh, to be honest with you, I was I was like. Like, yeah, I, I mean, I, I could probably it. fit it in, but then I, I was I like, didn't. we got Rebel Moon anyway, so. I didn't. Uh, so I was wrong. It's not episodic. It's literally, there's two episodes, but they're each like over an hour long. Right. So how do you want to do it? I guess. One episode? I guess we'll have to do the one and then the. Well, two sure. volumes, yeah? Yeah, and then what we can do is we'll do the live stream on it, and then we can, uh, you can, your guy can chop it up, and then uh, my guy can chop it up, and we each upload it. Well, I mean, we don't. Oh, you mean like watching it? What do you mean talking? No, about it? we watch it on our own time. Yeah, I figure we're just talking about it on like Stargraph episode four, or whatever, right? Yeah, whatever, four or five, whatever. Yeah. Oh boy, do we need to chop that up? I assume it would just be straightforward. No, but I would, I would, I would take it and I'd chop it up. I have my guy chop it up, and what you do with Mueller, and I'd have him put clips and stuff in between while we're. Discussing things. Oh, sure, yeah, if you wanted to do that. I'm, yeah, I'll probably do that. Probably will. I've only seen the first one. Dude, I saw them both a long time ago. But it was not an hour long. They were episodes, from what I remember. When I was a kid, I was on Cartoon Network, I think. Well, because the IMDb lists them as episodes. But I guess they're yeah, all packed into like a volume pack or whatever. I think Disney took volume one and two and just like packed them. Yeah. Okay, is there any other news with Star Wars? Let's see. Before we head on out. Lore reveals Leia was the real chosen one. Star Wars Rogue Squadron should have existed. No, there isn't. No news. That's pretty much it. I got nothing else to add. I know it's a pretty quick show tonight, Christmas Day. What do you think? Yeah. Anything else you want to talk well, about? Well, I mean, you know, uh, uh, I mainly want to talk to you about Rebel Moon. It looks like we don't really disagree on much. I feel like, no, we don't disagree on much. I feel like we covered all of the it. Way, I, I think the way that we tie, we disagree is just like I rate it like terrible and you seem to be a lot more like, eh, mixed bag, not really into it. Well, here's the thing with my rating. So if I'm going to rate it in terms of like every single movie I've ever seen in my life, it gets like a four. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to rate it as like how I felt on that day, yeah, like a six. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, okay, yeah, you know, I got nothing to do today. Okay, this new movie came out. Is it going to entertain me? All right, you know, I'm here with chat. I'm doing a live stream, a watch party. Cool. That's kind of how I rate things. But if I'm going to rate it in terms of, like, every movie I've ever seen, like if we're going to compare it to The Gladiator or Star Wars or Troy or whatever, Last Samurai, it gets, like, probably a four at most. I still think that's, like, of high. How do you rate things? How do you, like, do you... Uh, the two Compare modes it to I everything? have is continuity and then just how it makes me feel. So, how it makes right. me feel like I'm often miserable watching Zack Snyder's work. Um, not just because I hate the way that he shoots a lot of stuff, especially when he's in full control. Like I said, watch mm. Army of the Dead for the worst version of his like 
his artistic eye come to life. It's actually like it gave me a headache watching that film. Yeah. Um, then there's like the way that he does characters, the way that he's copying loads of work without understanding like the spirit of it in it at all. And then there's just the amount of wasted time is feel like amazement to me. Obviously, mm. we just put out a three-hour episode going over all of my issues with the film. If you yeah, really so. want to know, but yeah. Um, yeah. So for all of that, I'm having a miserable experience watching it. So that's like really low. But then if we go strictly by what I would call continuity, which is just judging the story, its mechanics, its setup, its payoffs, its cause and effect. I mean, as I've gone over with you, I think it's crap. I don't think there's anything in here that really makes any sense. I think the the, the wheel building's already crap from the beginning. Like the, the way they try and talk about the mother world, how it all gets set up, why they're doing what they're doing. Like yeah. this, this farming community, why everybody's fucking obsessed with it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, all the decisions they're trying to make. I don't know why they're even trying to mount a defense against the mother world instead of like trying to just move somewhere, like leave. Yeah. Um, so that's all going to be in part two. And then all these characters, that, when you get free reign to make completely new characters from anywhere in the universe that have any backstory you want, and this is what you do, yeah, it's almost like frustrating to me. Like, why would you, why would you waste this opportunity, man? Millions, hundreds of millions, or whatever. Like, it's, 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 and he's done it before. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. he did it like many times. He had DC as an IP to be able to play with. Do you know how insane that is? Everybody will be watching you, and you get to play with people like Superman and Batman. Insane. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, from both perspectives, I think this is like an abysmal failure. And um, I tend to be almost harsher than I would be with like a B-movie because mm. B-movies, like they're struggling artists that are desperately trying to make something work when they have like nobody helping them. These, these enormous projects with like thousands of people working on it. Yeah. How did you make this? Yeah, I feel like I'm a bit harsher than you, but that's okay. <laughs> I think because I'm not invested emotionally into it i'm not like it, it doesn't make me angry like with star wars that's i think why i get clipped into oblivion is because I, i'm passionate about it so like you know everything comes yeah. out but with this one i'm just like okay well yeah whatever oh, it's man, like solo a, for me i've got a bit of a history with snyder if you look on the okay fair channel, enough. we've covered everything from man of steel all the way up to rebel Moon. fair enough yeah i'm i for me i praise his man of steel so it's like he kind maybe, of has maybe, like maybe a, i could a, ruin that for you one day pass could you Oh, Maybe. No, geez. I mean, please don't. When Superman burns all the embryos and says Krypton had its chance, that's probably one of the most assassinated moments for that character I've ever seen in, in every iteration. Well, when he kills, when he kills Zod, even in the film when that came out, this was how many years ago? I was just like, what? He wouldn't kill anybody. That was pretty controversial in that. But I yeah. don't understand how that is more controversial than, he, if you remember, I don't want to, you know. Take up all your time today, but... <laughs> no, yeah. I got nothing to do, man. I'm going to go play GTA after this stream, probably. Right. So, the way it worked was the, you know, the, the Kryptonians moved to Earth. They want to terraform it to make it for their new planet, and they brought embryos to grow new Kryptonians. And uh, if you remember, when, he's, when he's, he needs to slice the ship in half, Superman, yeah. to prevent it from completing its mission, and to do so... He has to right. destroy all the embryos, of which Zod is like, you know, don't fucking do that. Holy shit, kill, 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 <laughs> kill them all. And if you remember the thing, I couldn't believe it when I'd rewatched it for the first time, because it had been so long. Um, Superman says Krypton had its chance, and he just fucking burns through all the embryos. I was like, damn, that's loads, that's just countless lives that you've just decided don't deserve to live. And if you remember, of course, uh, some people say like those embryos mm. were engineered to be like Zod or to be like soldiers or whatever, but yeah. so were Superman's parents. Uh, Jor-El and his wife, they were both more engineered embryo types. Like, Superman was a baby born free of that. He was like a genuine uh, That's natural baby. What I always took from that moment, too, is like when he said Krypton had its chance, it was like, well, he's essentially killing all these Zod wannabes. They're not, though. That's the thing. When you, when you understand the mechanics fully, uh, they're no different than, the, than where Jor-El came from. Hmm. Like, all of them That's had the weird. potential to live whatever lives they could have. Um, obviously, if Zod was raising all of them, then yeah, they might turn out to be... But that still seems completely antithetical to Superman, doesn't it? It does, for sure. I mean, it, but... I almost feel like he wouldn't do that unless there was a good reason. That's, well, I mean, I, I think Man of Steel is awful. Um, that's one of the bigger reasons I hate it, but we've got a big old breakdown of that if you want to see that someday, too. <laughs> like we, yeah, I'll check it out, sure. We, um, it's one of my favorite films, for sure. We, we go through stuff like this, and we try to pick apart, but in a way that... Because like, this is what I mean. It's, it almost sounds like 
uh, exhausting. But we did it with Lord of the Rings recently, and it, you know, in a way that was like praising it. We were like, look right. at how amazing all the mechanics are. Look how great the cause right. and effect is. Yeah. And that's what I'm looking for in mo movies. I love well, it. Well, of course. Yeah. The artistry is like top notch. Of course, yes. Yeah, well, Wars. so I get to a point where, where I just kind of acknowledge that, okay, this movie isn't going to be blowing my mind away, but it's, it's entertaining me. Kind of like, um, yeah. What'd you think of Sin City? Yeah, I like Sin City. Would you ever do a video on that? I don't know if I'm passionate enough about it to make a video on mm. it, but um, maybe like a EFAP movies type thing. What's one What's one movie you really are dying to cover? Make a video about uh, the Killer, David Fincher, because everybody's oh. talking about that movie in a way that I'm especially baffled into. Like, why aren't people talking about the the things that I thought the film was about? Um, a lot of people. It's a new movie. Yeah, it is new. A lot of people have taken it to be like a boring John Wick or a film where they tell us he's a competent hitman, but he's actually incompetent when it's about so much more than that. I, I was getting confused as to what people thought. David Finch is an amazing filmmaker. Um, have you seen Gone Girl? I've heard of it. Let me see Gone Girl. Nope. Jeez, uh, man, have I? You would have seen Fight Club, though, right? Of course. So oh, you you're familiar with him at least somewhere. Many times, yeah. Gone Girl. Maybe I'll watch that tonight. Hmm. Psychological thriller. Have I not seen this? What is it about? Uh, it's kind of hard to explain without kind of spoiling it a little bit. Uh, a, a girl who's gone. Yeah, we could put it that way. She disappears. <laughs> she does well. She she's killed, and uh, it looks like her husband is responsible. I think I have seen this. This is not the one with Anna de Armas, is it? No, no, she's not in it. Um, unless you're mixing her up with Emily Ratatowski or whatever her name is. No. There was another one with Ben Affleck where he's... Uh... Chat, do you guys remember that one? Anna de Armas and I think Ben Affleck. Hmm. Let me see. Let me see what this movie this was. That was... Uh... Emily Ratatouille. Emily <laughs> Ratatouille. Uh, Deep Water. Oh, yes, right. Deep Water. I don't know why I'm thinking of that right now. A well-to-do husband who allows his wife to have affairs in order to avoid a divorce becomes a prime suspect in the disappearance, right, of her lovers. Yeah, I remember this. Okay. That was a weird movie. <laughs> it is a weird movie. Um, <laughs> have, you, have you seen it? Wait, oh, I was talking about Gone Girl, unless you were talking about something oh, else. Oh, no. I'm talking about deep water. Oh, I don't know what deep water is, but <laughs> fair enough. Oh, a well-to-do husband who allows his wife to have affairs in order to avoid a divorce becomes a prime suspect in the disappearance of her lovers. Oh, yeah, no. Sorry, I heard someone else. But no, yeah, I haven't seen that. Hmm. Yeah, it actually was interesting. Entertaining. In seven? Yeah? Oh, fuck. It's one of the best film. movies. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, so I'm a David Fincher fan. Jeez, I didn't know this. Yeah, well, most people, I guess, are, because most people have seen and love Fight Club, you know? Yeah. I've seen it many times. That's wild. How am I first hearing about this now? Well, oh, so I guess he likes to put Kevin Spacey and uh, Brad Pitt in his movies. Uh, I'm trying to think of how many times he's used Kevin Spacey. Obviously not using him anymore. <laughs> I guess, yeah, just once. Wait, why? Uh, Kevin Spacey got a uh, career kind of oh. ended. Oh. Do you know okay. anything about that? Or... No. Well, just Google it and you'll find out plenty. Kevin Spacey and Tucker Carlson released Bizarre Christmas Video. <laughs> That's another thing that happened recently. Kevin Spacey ruins Christmas with Tucker Carlson interview. <laughs> Kevin Spacey and Tucker Carlson have been... Kevin Spacey shares Bizarre Christmas message as House of Cards character. What? Oh, that's a lot of lore that you're... Uh... What happened? I like Kevin Spacey. What happened to him? Uh, it ruins Christmas. Which... <laughs> what, what, what? It's all the same headline. So, um... Many Post accusations another bizarre video. came out about what Kevin Spacey got up to in Hollywood with young boys. Um, what? And then all the people who were accusing him started dying mysteriously. Uh... And I think recently he got like cleared of everything, and so now he made a video with Tucker Carlson in character as his House of Cards character. Uh, 
that's the quickest summary I could give you. There's so much more to go into. Mm. Mm. Spacey is Uncle Touchy. Oh, that's a way <laughs> to put it, I guess. Oh, geez. All right. Well, how did you not know about this? Hey, man. I don't keep up to date by. with. I don't keep up to date with shit like that. I mean, I just live in my own little world. Not ragging on the other guys. Uh, if you had to live on one Star Wars planet forever, which would it be? Mine is actually Oct Two. Oh Jesus! What, you want to have titty milk all, all your life? <laughs> um, or go for Coruscant? Yeah, I'd go for Coruscant, man. You can do anything you want there. Yeah. It's like probably Florida or Los Angeles I feel like put you get together. To meet the most people there too, because the everyone's coming in and out, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't be Tatooine. It wouldn't be Nar oh. Shaddaa. It would, I mean, Naboo would be a nice place to just probably enjoy your life. Yeah, Naboo. I mean, Mustafar, it's tropical. Amino, clone yourself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bruh, he's yapping Man of Steel was good. The music. The music was good. Mm. The story was shit. <laughs> but hey, you know what? <laughs> Fuck, That's dude. I, okay. I, I, I loved it. You have to watch Arnold T's I Fix Star Wars in Three Minutes. It's epic. Baby Yoda is thumbnail. I need Mahler's review. You won't be disappointed. It's art in every sense of the word. Show me some art. What's it called? Six stalls and three. Give me four. I need your help. They took the child. We will help you. Mandalorians have been in exile from our homeworld for far too long. I will kill the monster and retake what is right in the eye. With the dark saber restored to me. Mandalore, find me. Be within range. This is the way. <laughs> All right. I am so content. All right. Was good. Oh well. That was good. good to know there's still art being made in the realm of yeah. Star Wars. That's what, yeah. that's what matters. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love that guy. Uh, Mary Crimbo and all good night. And good night all. Uh what's it called when you read stuff backwards? I think I'm dyslexic. Also, Mauler show Star Wars Theory the Poop Cactus last Jedi cartoon clip for reference. What's this? Fuck. Which thing are they? I'm not 100 percent sure. Is that a is that an animation that was made by somebody or is that something else? Wait, just type in poop cactus DLJ. See what comes <sighs> up. I misspelled it. Fuck. Stupidest thing said. Defending Star Wars: The Last Jedi. Probably. How Star Wars: the Last Jedi should have ended. I have maybe EFAP after it. See if that gets anything. Because man, we have like a million memes, and I've. Yeah, I'm not sure. The last year is a, why would you why would you say it's the last year? I'll get you guys links to the actual stream. Who said that? The last year is amazing and you're all are insane. Oh, let me guess, a sequel trilogy fan. That was Major Lee, and we covered him in that video. Holy fuck, well, that video like... was a trip. <laughs> His defense of Admiral Holdo is that you get to look at women. <laughs> you seem impressed. Fuck. Hope you're both having a great holiday season. You too, Serena. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Do you like the movie The Crow? They're making a remaking, right? Just Jason Momoa, right? Probably not touch it. Um, the Crow is like one of the best comic book adaptations from pretty neat movie. I need to rewatch it. It's been a while. I need to rewatch it. I don't think I ever finished it. I think it went halfway and then 
ADD or something. Happy holidays to you both. Hope you guys are having a great day. Thank you, Ronan. Thanks for being a member for 40 freaking months. Hope you're having a great day. Yeah, hope you're having a great Christmas. We hope you're all having a great Christmas. What's up, Mike? Cheers, man. Cheers. Well, I don't got much else to discuss. Did you, um, did we go through the ones beginning of the stream? Yeah. Well, I popped them up on the, there's only a few. Merry Christmas? Yeah, we did. Popped them all up. Christian, Merry Christmas, guys. Go on YouTube and search for Mahler Rise of Skywalker Insults. 130 <laughs> minutes of pure comedy. I don't think I did. Look at that one. Mahler Rise of Skywalker Insults. Pull well, from my Rise of Skywalker video. You should just watch that, all right? I, uh... With the, this one? No, like the full, yeah, the full video, but like not next. <laughs> like when you get, you know, when you have a spit. Oh, an hour, 30 minutes. A, a minute and 30, they said. Oh, no, that's Mahler's Rise of the, the Oh, this one. Yeah. Kyle fucking Ren. This character is so utterly inconsistent that he's become the personification of tangled up Christmas tree lights drenched in yogurt and acid. The Emperor lifts <laughs> all of his Star Destroyers out of the fucking floor of Exegol with the big gay. What fresh hell is this? You decrepit omelette. The gay. You irritable numpty. You querulous cunt. You absolute skunk fume. You clod. The big gay. Get back to the fucking ship, you Diuretic Thunderwally. Use the lasers, you donkey. The guy who's thunderwally? the fucking carnival penis at Lucasfilm that a <laughs> <laughs> fucking carnival penis. <laughs> he does look like a carnival penis. He's trying to examine it. He's like, oh, I can't. It's at Lucasfilm that approved this tumorous fudge we call a scene was just silly. Is just silly. That's just silly. Just silly. Just fucking silly. Silly. Fucking silly. 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 Gay. You insipid <laughs> piss waffle. You dumbass. Lol. Fucking pond scum script. You guys are so incompetent that I'm starting to think you didn't make it to The Last Jedi because you just got lost. That's just what? Fuck this gelatinous plum of a script. She could sense the gay. That thick fuck. You piece of shit, crotch brained cunt bucket of an excuse for a script. The dark gay. Holy mother of Hades, you galactic fuck. Fuck off. <laughs> the dark gay. How about you look out the fucking window, you turbo cunt? You fucking hab. You pancake fuck. You dopey cock holster. You <laughs> petulant fuck, celery stick fuck. You duck fuck. You piece of shit. You greedy cow. Continue to use the big gay. The gay. Palpa fuck. You abysmal shit mole. Get fucked. You hollow money grubbing cunts. Well, I think that makes up for. Yeah, it makes up for the amount of uh, swears that I haven't had on this channel. That's good. That's the thing. Uh, nice. People watch the videos and then they're like, good God, he's like a monster. And then they talk to me in person. I'm like, oh, well, I mean, I do it for entertainment. <laughs> <That's like> the... <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to make you laugh. It's not like I'm actually a super yeah. angry crazy bad. Well, yeah, thanks for... Uh... <laughs> thanks, Christian, for, for that. Appreciate it. Yeah. Family-friendly channel here. And you want know to be fair, ratio-wise, that's out of two hours. You know, the rest of it is very, uh, very straightforward and very, very, very non crass Methodical. You know? yeah. yeah. That's good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't watch this one. Oh, that's the one you probably wouldn't like, actually. Because it just shits on Ahsoka? It shits on specifically that episode five. I hate. Really? You didn't like episode five? Mm-hmm. No, I wish we were chatting during that time. Yeah, yeah. And hmm. uh, I talk about Futurama and Buffy in there. I don't know. Of course I've seen them. Of course I've like seen Buffy. Similar episodes, structures, and I go through like how they nailed it in those shows and that Star Wars completely wastes the opportunity. Would you not want a show that's just about Anakin and young Ahsoka in the Clone Wars? I... Would, you uh, would, would have the radical opinion that I think Star Wars could literally be about absolutely anything and be good yeah. if only the people making it had like talent in writing and that no matter what Anakin, Braun or Ahsoka or all of the people you could ever recognize are in it, it doesn't matter as long as they keep writing the way that they are, which unfortunately like the, the Anakin Ahsoka stuff in that episode not only does it amount to like 15% of the episode but it's incredibly yeah. thin and so widely interpretable that it drove me yeah. nuts seeing people say like it's uh, it means this, no this, 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 
And every interpretation has serious problems in terms of how it fits in with the rest of the world. And this is without having seen the Clone Wars, which I got a couple of friends who've told me like, yeah. there's there's a couple of things that don't make any sense uh, considering a couple of episodes of the Clone Wars. So it's you know, it's this whole thing. But uh, my mm. main issue was just, as far as I'm concerned, it was key jangling, which I am sure you're all familiar with. Just the whole, look, it's Anakin. Look, it's Vader. Stuff you recognize, the Clone Wars, and uh, please ignore the fact that we have no substance right now. I thought it was dope. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was cool to see them. I would have loved to have seen them in some sort of a show together. I think, you know, the fact that it was like, a, yeah, it was like a foggy haze or whatever. There definitely could have been more going on in the background for sure. Fine. But uh, as in terms of a show, man, I would love to see Hayden and um, I forgot the actress's name, but the young Ahsoka, I think that would be freaking awesome I would to, love see to see the Jedi again. And I think this is yeah. a perspective you have. I'd love to see a live action Clone Wars stuff with... Aiden and That's, Ewan, and then you, yeah. there's people who say like, uh, "We already have that. It's called the Clone." And it's like, "No, no, no, oh, no." Oh God! Yeah, I saw that. I saw. I, 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 I made saying. a tweet. Like, I made a tweet, and people got butt hurt about it. And they were like, "We had that in the Clone." It's like, "Yeah, well, wouldn't you want to see a live action? You fucking idiot! Like, oh, why yeah. wouldn't you want to see that?" There's always going to be the Clone Wars was a huge section of time. There's always going to be more stories you can tell. And when you've got those two actors, who everyone loves, by the way, and the yeah. chemistry they have and the experience they have, why not let them loose in the playground of the Clone Wars? That's what I'm saying. I wouldn't even mind if you remade some of the episodes from the Clone Wars, but in live action. You know, that's what it, I'm saying. And if they were that's like, what well, what's the point? That's like undervaluing animation. It's like, no, it's just giving the chance to the other no. actors to portray similar stories. I have no issue in reverse, even like uh, having live action, then turning them into animations and stuff. I, I'm just saying that you've got them there. They are willing. You've got apparently plenty of money to burn. I have no problem with um, that sort of. Mola doesn't know who Ahsoka is, lol. It's kind of true. Oh, geez. Did Ark send another one? Holy crap, dude. Plagued Creations number 59 video. Literal poop cactus. Oh, there you go. Okay. Type that in. Is that what that is? Plagued. I'm, I'm starting to... Creations. The, the Attenborough, like, parody I think I was doing on, like, a stream. It might be. Literal poop. This one? Plague Creations is awesome. Yes, that's probably it. Who is that? It's a, it's a guy who makes amazing animation. For yeah, your he, stuff? Well, he's done quite a few for EFAPs. So I think he does other things as well. Like, um, oh, cool. Friends and everything. But... Very talented man. It's yeah, almost just, becoming no. a case. What's that? Are you talking or was it him? No, that's just oh. the video. Oh. <laughs> Study for the theme critics. <laughs> We're in lab She's coats there. watching his struggle. We're like, wow. So they, when when receiving an obvious and very <laughs> fundamental, relatable theme, they go nuts. <laughs> this, this is the like yeah. Attenborough narration. We provided a theme to these creatures, and now we see them in a frenzy. What is that? They even start to attack each other. The ants cannot see, so despite the fact the theme is right in front of their faces, Ooh. they cannot smell it, so they desperately search. This is a uh, super context. On the ground, they attack one another, they turn violent. <laughs> they are now pooping what on the theme. On the theme. Pooping all over the theme. Is this the poop cactus? The the, so was, the context is just like I'm assuming you've come across them, but people like don't care at all about Star Wars' history or Star Wars' characters. They just talk about the themes. They're like, oh, don't you understand the themes of this and the themes of that? Like TLJ had it all over it, and a lot of videos oh, we ended up covering yeah. would be like, it doesn't matter that this is inconsistent with this or this character's assassinated. It doesn't matter. It's the theme. It's the theme of redemption. It's the theme of triumph. It's the theme of <sighs> you know, let the history, let the past die, and all that shit. And yeah, those people are special angels. Well, and, our point of view is the themes don't themes aren't supposed to be incongruent with the characters or the story. Themes are supposed to be no. uh, in line with them. They support them. Yeah. Uh, it's symbiotic in a way. So exactly. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. They think the theme is a bathroom. How hideous! They're taking taking a shit on the theme, like a like a poorly trained house cat. And now we introduce. The last Jedi into the habitat, and they all come. <laughs> Wonderful. 
Oh. How does this not have more views, dude? This is hilarious. <laughs> we do like meme type episodes. We try to cover. Despite all evidence to the contrary, they believe it to be the greatest film ever made. Despite it being beautiful poop cactus. <laughs> poop cactus. <laughs> it, is prick, it, is prick, it is prickly with its poop. They begin oh. to hold it. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, it's just fascinating. And I'm really only pressing play at this point to just see if there's anything else worth commenting on with the thread. Yeah, of the video. My, my investment in this video is uh, by the moment it wanes. Yes. <laughs> oh, wane. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. Oh, Fuck. Yeah, we, uh, Shit. That's hilarious. That's what we do on uh, EFAP. Is, is essentially weekly. We just kind of uh, watch other people's videos and see what uh, we're missing, you know? And that's how EFAP got started, is we watched a lot of TLJ videos. And it wasn't to just clown on him. It was to be like, what did we not understand about the movie? <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> Why is it the themes? So and yeah, a the lot themes. of people like it's the themes. Oh, God. I would the love to have a discussion. broken with... in that movie. I, I think. Any Last Jedi defender, I would easily be able to have a very great conversation with. In a way that's like convincing them, or do you mean just friendly? Yeah, friendly, convincing. Uh, I think it would be a very engaging conversation because I, I, seen the movie twice. That was more than enough for me to be able to really ana analyze Luke Skywalker's character and how that movie abysmally just destroys it. Yeah, and goes against the grain completely. I've uh, spoken to people who've desperately tried to create any and all senses of like a construction of how he ends up on Hawk 2, how he, how he ends up doing all that. And it's just, like the one thing they can never get past is abandoning his family to die. It's, you can't, it's impossible. It make any sense. Um, if you had like a whole trilogy of justifications, like his mind getting toyed with by the dark side or uh, his, yeah, yeah. all, all yeah. his sort of justifications, like you might be able to get somewhere near it, but uh, one flashback, nah, you can't do it like no, dude. And, and again, like to be able to do that where he goes away to explain that, I think you would have to have some sort of a major reason and like a greater good. Because if you have something where he's literally sacrificing his whole life and giving up the force, which is like his ability to save the universe and galaxy, there has to be something much bigger and overarching reason. And the only thing for if you're going to send him away like that, I think would be, okay, Snoke wants to get a sample of his blood and they've perfected cloning to the point where they're, if they get even like a hair on his head, then they'll be able to create the perfect Luke, evil Luke. That would be like, all right, fine. But no, they just had him go away because he wanted to be a little bitch and give up. Came to this island to die. Cool, nice. Awesome. Thank you, Ryan Johnson. Maybe you can take some testosterone, you bitch. Uh, <laughs> happy Christmas, guys. Mahler, how long did it take you to make the Rise of Skywalker video, and where do you even start when making the videos? In the Rise of Skywalker one, say three weeks. It was just nonstop. That was back when I like, was obsessively trying to get these things out, and it's not the kind of workload I like to do. Uh, yeah. Where it's just like, you know, wake up, work, go to sleep, wake up, work, go to sleep. Even try to like eat food while proofing videos gets insane, yeah. but you know, you get some stuff done all fasting. In fact, then how do you start? I just watch the movies and make notes. Then I turn the notes into a script and collect up conclusions. A lot of the conclusions just sprout out of noticing patterns. Yeah. Once you see enough of the same thing, like in, you know, Rebel Moon, for example, is like, it's an obvious pattern of, I have no idea who these people are. Once you say that about an individual enough times, you're like, oh, that's a pattern. It's like, what is it indicative of? It's indicative of character writing that Zack Snyder lacks or chose not to do. Or mm. perhaps is present in his extended cut. Perhaps, yeah. But perhaps. why wouldn't he release the extended cut from the beginning? I, uh, people have been saying they're trying to recreate the Snyder cut stuff, which I think is a huge mistake. I um, mean, like the hype? Yeah, like the same sort of vibes of like, yeah, let's all get on board oh. for pushing for that big cut. Yeah, that's the one. You know, it's, it's almost like double dipping for a movie. I see. But I don't think oh, yeah, okay. this time. Because this isn't DC and there's, there's no like big studio entanglement. Netflix Got is it. supposed to be his friend this time. So it's just... So it's like when you take a YouTube video and then you like add a few extra things and you re-upload it. Yes. Essentially. But like it's the... Right. Definitive version. Yeah. I would have had, except it didn't take 100 million to make. I would have had respect if Rex had the Clone Wars voice. 
Yeah, they gave him Timur Morrison's voice instead of the Clone Wars voice. In the 2D? In uh, the Ahsoka episode, I guess they're referencing. That's the best. Why would you want the Clone Wars voice? Uh, I mean, you know... It's it live action. Depends on which school of thought you come from for that, because... I don't know. You, I, I could see him using either. What's live action? It's like saying, let's use uh, Matt Lanter instead of Hayden Christensen. Uh, I mean, if if he could suit the part, some people might have thought that that would be respectful, but... It's, no. hmm. it's, it's really dependent on the person. I suppose. I think everything live action stays live action. I think it the, the Clone Wars voice was adapted to sound like Timur Morrison. So it's why not use the original if we're going if we can actually have the real one. I mean, they'll be fat because like that guy, uh, yeah, D. Bradley Baker. Because I'm Bradley, not familiar yeah. with the show, right? But he played yeah. D, well Rex as many as well as others for a really long time, right? Like decades. He did. Yeah, he did. You could totally see why people would want to have the cameo voice be his instead of Morrison. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Oh. I liked Clone Wars Ahsoka, but didn't like Dawson. Hmm. Yeah, I wasn't that impressed. I think she's a great actress. I don't think she did very well as Ahsoka. Can this please last another four hours? I'm working late, and this makes work so much better. Probably will end <laughs> soon. Probably end soon. <laughs> Just, just letting you know. Um, initially, but we 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 love the fact that you love the show. Oh, there yeah. probably will be some four hour episodes once shows start coming out. And uh, <laughs> I can't do four hour episodes. <laughs> There's no there when shows come out, man. People we'll finish our talk in like maybe an hour, and then super chats will last like three hours because people just keep sending. You literally have to be like stop sending us money we're going to leave now and people just send it to keep you there yeah it's it's nice it's beautiful but at the same time it's like let me go <laughs> like how many times did i say okay well, show's ending we have like eight more super chats now it's like initially i like the sequel trilogy do you think we'd ever do more than two hours here because i know you capped it two hours on monday well so this is, i dude, we could go for like 12 hours talking about stuff but like i legit like yeah. um, the only way I agreed to do the show is that we keep it to two hours, at least on my end, because I, I am a yeah. part of so many podcasts, it's actually become insane and absurd. All right. Well, maybe you guys can work on Mahler a little bit. I'm guilt tripping. <laughs> the guilt tripping. <laughs> Initially, I liked the sequel trilogy because I had the hots for Ray. Then after deep dive research on what the sequel trilogy could have been, I did a 180 on it. I can't even watch a few minutes of it now. Oh, yes. Well, the wacky trilogy. First, first time I left the theater with The Force Awakens, I was like, no. This is not it at all. Merry Christmas, guys. What's up, Doom Slaying Dempsey? Do you think Crimson Empire would make a good trilogy TV show? Has some fun characters. I don't know what. Not familiar oh, with Crimson Empire. Crimson Empire. It's like old Star Wars. <laughs> Addiction to podcast. Um, why do I think it's old Star Wars? It's new Star Wars. Oh, it's Kira stuff. Is it? Oh, that's Crimson Rain. Crimson Empire. No, it is old Star Wars. Yes, indeed. Release date November 30th, 2011 was Crimson Empire 3. You know what? I'm not too familiar with Crimson Empire. Hmm. But I will. I'm going to research it. Because I do remember seeing those in the comic book stores. You're welcome, Star Wars Theory, for the context. Thanks, Archangel Angel. And thanks for the big soupies, man. The last Jedi Defenders lost every time over Fleet Chase. Oh, you mean like whatever the fuck oh, that the whole... Holdo bullshit? Um the main plot of TLJ, right, being that they've got this mm. entire fleet chasing them, when if they just sent one Star Destroyer ahead, then that's it. It's over. It, it's retarded as a chase in many reasons, but... Can we forgive Korra holding off two people flanking her? Remember in Lord of the Rings when Gimli says, Toss me! And when him and Aragorn jump on the bridge, dozens of surrounding orcs inexplicably, inexplicably, inexplicably fall over. Well, I mean... Got 
Uh, loads of them are being flanked without realizing it, and then Aragorn is Numenorian, and they're on a narrow pathway, and they still have to, like, get out of there. They're, they're both, they're two of the best fighters we have in that selection, so I think that's much more believable than Cora holding a man on either side of it. I don't even know why they did that. Like I said, there's so many better ways to portray that combat. And then if you take the sequences as a whole, Helm's Deep is possibly the greatest fight in movie history. Like, the whole battle is one of the most, like, highest rate of all time. Meanwhile, the Korra fight in the barn is, like, embarrassing. So, I don't know. Would you say you're more knowledgeable about Lord of the Rings or Star Wars? Ooh. Well, so... If you had a contest just, to go into... If we looking at the trilogies themselves as movies... Like the mm -hmm. OT versus Lord of the Rings trilogy or something, then yep. yeah, yeah. right now it probably would be Lord of the Rings, but only because I recently mm -hmm. watched them and then did a bunch of shit for like the editing, right? So I, I had right. a lot of, but you know, if I was to rewatch the OT today, then it would probably take back over again. Well, if you want to do one for the original trilogy and you want me involved, I'm down. Well, I mean, I'd love to the be. prequels, right? If you if we we're going to do yeah. a trilogy with you. Yeah, let me know. When I saw The Last Jedi the first time, I left numb. I've never had a reaction like that from a film. People asked me what I thought about it when I couldn't, and I couldn't answer. The second time I saw it, I walked out and I was like, I hate the shit. Yeah. I've done a lot Absolutely. of videos covering a lot of movies. TLJ was the biggest one of people telling me they needed the video to help them understand why they were thinking what they were thinking. That sort of experience, it was kind of insane. Like the amount, yeah. culturally speaking, what that film did is, is probably unmatched. Yeah, I know. It like destroyed, literally destroyed the fandom. Yeah, but that's what he wanted to do, right? It was that stupid video of him where he's like, "A great film is where one half of the audience <laughs> absolutely hates it, thinks it's the worst thing they've ever seen, and then the other half loves it and praises it." And I think which that's is horseshit because if everybody loved his films, he wouldn't complain. He wouldn't be like, "Damn it, fuck!" Like that's just such a cop out answer because he shit sucks. We mean, Mahler, now you have to start. A-S-O-I-A-F podcast with Glimbus and become Lord of the Seven Podcasts, Protector of the Realm. It'll be a Song of Ice and Fire and uh, Glimbus is uh, Glidus. He does <laughs> House of the Dragon stuff. I'll Don't join and we can me. continue for a couple more hours. You know what? I'll watch your new story vids. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, thank you for the invite. <laughs> thank you for inviting yourself, Michael. <laughs> watch Mahler's Tarkin impression. We did this last time, The Last Jedi Critique Part 1, 15, 18 timestamp. I think it's great. You're gonna, you're gonna take more time and more messages. I see you. I see. No, because I, I want to go play GTA <laughs> and, and God of War. I want to go on the gaming channel. And... <laughs> oh, you playing? You still play Valhalla? Yeah. I uh, know the DLC came out. Yeah, Valhalla. Mm -hmm. Playing it? Yeah. Through the story. No, I keep dying. <laughs> keep dying and going back to the beginning. I mean, I made it like quite far, but. Mm -hmm. No, when he gets to Greece, it's kind of you just <sighs> to a critique of Star Wars: The Last Jedi. This video is going to spoil. Hi, I'm Commander Poe Dameron. I've come to negotiate with Governor Tarkin. Is he there? Whatever negotiations you wish to engage in, Commander Dameron, I warn you: the best I shall offer is a swift death. Surrender now, and I shall accommodate such a request. Hello, Tarkin. Mm. Is he there? Tall guy, kinda pale. Your obvious attempts at humor during a most desperate hour for your comrades only reveals your weakness. Surrender or be destroyed. Oh, hey Tarky, there you are. You I think I'm more impressed with the uh, the English accent. The the, the American accent. Oh, Wait, really? <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> no, I'm, I would almost, I'm I, I'd want to redo it. Those people really like this, and I was like, I rushed the fuck out of this. I feel like it could be a lot better, but... Why does it say Star Wars Battlefront 2? Gaming. Because uh, I have Star Wars Battlefront 2 gameplay in there. Not the 2017 one. Oh, the whole breakdown. thing just... The whole thing is background. It's oh, three yeah, okay. parts. I just go through the whole movie. Oh, right on. What do you think about The Expanse? I'm not familiar with it, really. No. What is that? The sci-fi IP... Got mm. books and a TV. What are some of y'all favorite sci-fi outside of Star Wars? I'm a huge fan myself for Aliens, and well, I know you like Aliens. Hell yeah. 
Aliens is my second favorite movie of all time, I think. Um, I like Star Trek shows. I like, I love Galaxy Quest, to be honest. Quest is amazing. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Beyond that, sci-fi. I mean... I mean, Predator counts, right? I have to really think, I guess, but... Yeah, I really like old movies. Like, old, not old as in old, but... Well, I do. But, like, you know, Gladiator and Last Samurai and those things, the Seven Samurai, things like that. Um, but probably also 80s action movies, 80s and 90s. But I know that's throw, not really helping um, you. Blade Runner can go in there. Absolutely. Stuff like Ex Machina. I think that would count as sci-fi. Yeah. There's a, there's a whole bunch, but this kind of thing with... There's almost so many, it's just like stuffed into my head and I can't think of any of them, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Smaller, what do you think of Looper? Uh, yeah, uh, Looper's fucking terrible. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yes. that's, yeah. Oh, I thought you meant the... Okay, yeah. Far point on Helm's Deep. Fair point on Helm's Deep. I guess Aragorn Gimli could be as enhanced as Korra is, though. Just wonder if we're too nitpicky sometimes. If Korra has... Uh, mechanical enhancements of any kind or like a super soldier serum type enhancement, I'd be totally fine with everything she does in this. I just don't think it's particularly interesting choreography at that point. As well as a lot of people like waiting for their cues. But mm -hmm. I think, this is what I mean, a lot of people misunderstand the criticism. They're like, oh, you just don't want to see a woman doing like strong things. It's like, no, no, no. It would be the same thing if it was like, you know that guy, the one good soldier? If he did the same thing. You're like, how yeah. is that guy standing up to all these guys who are way bigger than him? Like, this doesn't make sense. It's nothing to do with mm. men versus women. It's just uh, I want to be able to see like strength matter. I want to be able to look at the situation and understand the stakes, and then watch them play out as what one would expect. Yeah, Piston, I flashed this on the screen a bunch of times. I don't know if you saw or missed it or not, but uh, better tactician Thrawn in Ahsoka or Zap and Brannigan. Brannigan, military G on the on the level of Thrawn. Theory Kratos becomes the god of war. The god of hope. Spoiler view. The god of hope. What do you mean? Who knows what they mean. Yeah. Or that one. Uh, Shadows of the Sith. Novel. Way better than the sequels. Fair enough. God, his name always... <sighs> Alright, well, pretty much coming up on two hours. I'm going to leave before... Uh... Mahler falls asleep. Nailed it. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, we hope you guys had a good Christmas. We hope you enjoyed this quick little show today on Christmas Day. We love you guys. We had to come in and uh, chat and shoot the shit a little bit. So next week, we'll see you. We'll talk about the next events in Star Wars, and we'll talk about, uh, I guess, the first episode of Clone Wars 2D and give it a review. Oh, yeah. All right. So, yeah. Thanks, guys, for your time. Thanks for hanging with us. Thanks for your super chats, and we'll see you all in the next one. Mahler's channel is linked in the description below. And... Um, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Later.